Go on, if helps. Hope you keep it well. Oh, it's cold. Really cold. We've got, let's see if I can show you. First ground frost of the year. Had to scrape the car this morning, which was exciting. The skies are 98% clear. Forecast is to get up to about 10 degrees. And despite a recent storm, there's still a lot of colour around. Oh yeah, here we go. Let me show you this. Here's your ground frost. Beautiful colour on the horizon there as the sun's coming up behind us. All the crows waking up. No other bird sound. So, regular vlog today. I'm going to try and get down into some ancient oaks. It's been a while since I've shot any to be honest and I've, I've missed them. But this colour might distract me. So it depends on what we find. It's a bit of a pick and mix day today really. But we'll see, we'll see. We've gone back into lockdown as you'll know here in the UK effectively. And it limits how much time we can spend outdoors. Shut up. Always on my case. Limits the amount of time we can have outdoors. So it's not going to rush me, but I need to be quite economical with the time that I've got here. So I'm not going to mess about. I'm just going to get, get gone into the depths of the woods. Hopefully find something interesting. When I grab a composition, I'll bring you back, explain my thinking, and we'll take it from there. <laughs> Wish me luck. Noisy sods. I just happened to walk past the major oak for anybody who's not visited. Main attraction for visiting Shearwood is to see this fella. Estimated to be somewhere in the region of 800 to 1000 years old. Somebody very sadly broke off a section of the protective work there that protects the entrance to what is a hollow, hollow tree. Back in the 1970s, 80s, late 1970s of course, when we visited as a family, kids, we used to be able to have freedom to roam and we used to play hide and seek in that tree. Guess where we were hiding? Beautiful, isn't he? Absolutely. Incredible, incredible tree. The GoPro can't uh, capture the scale of him. Just got the last, last little bit of his seasonal leafage on. The sun's just catching the top of his canopy up there. And I can't hang about, mate. I'll grab your photo, but I'm on a mission. So I'm going to uh, take a quick shot. I'll pop that up now if I, uh, I'll pop that up now and uh, catch you in a bit. The sun's just coming up now and it's going to get bright real fast. The canopy's still relatively full so it's going to provide a lot of shelter still. There's going to be some amazing opportunities in this next 48, 72 hours if we don't have any more strong winds. These leaves are going to be hanging around for a few days and it's going to make some epic light, I'm sure of it. So anyway, sun's coming up over here. Major Oaks down here. And as I'm walking along this path, I just got the first glints of morning sun on these oaks here, marking the path. It's a very low canopy and 
the trail runs off down into what is a very ancient part of the, the forest. And there's this beautiful tree here. I've never shot him before. And uh, I just like the look of the, the morning sun swoop on this fella and then the path leading through. But down here, I had a bit of a dilemma because I can't really get much of this guy in with the path and the frame just felt wrong. So what I've done is I've gone over in that direction direction and try to compose something over there. Now from here not only did it let me just go back I just need to mention one other thing. Come on doofus wake up. So back here on this oh, wake up GoPro um, trail morning light beautiful oak sun brightness a bit too much it's going to dumb this down I won't be able to recover it recover it so I moved over here again <laughs> and from where I am because I've moved across the frame I still retain these little indications of morning sun coming from this direction I can get a better composition on the swoop of this, not the best side of him, but we've got this big gnarly burl bit here. And we've got some treeage. So there's a lot less highlights in what I will draw out of this as a composition. So on camera, it resembles that. And I've, instead of thinking about the, the leaves on the floor, I've concentrated on trying to get as close to this guy as I can. And I've done it because of this. There's this felled silver birch here. Beautiful trunk, isn't it? But what it's meant is to eradicate this, I've had to come up. And by the time I get to there, I may as well get to there. And that's where I've ended up, which is taken out the leaves at the bottom but still retain some of this morning sun in fact i'm going to take another one it's just getting a bit brighter challenging challenging shot but it might be nice so we'll see i'll uh, put this away find another one <laughs> see you in a bit <laughs> i could spend all day here so easily. The lights reasonably hello like, what time is it? It's 8.22 so I don't have a huge amount of time left here. I need to be mindful of the old uh, restrictions we're all under. But you can see that the, the sun's up and hitting these silver birch. The last of the, the canopy here there's some beautiful light um there it's just beautiful <laughs> and i came across another tree not far away from the last one this fella he don't have much of a canopy on him bless him he's probably coming towards the end of his days but the canopy he has got this uh, beautiful branch here rich in foliage still some more a little way up and it goes all the way up there it's i never say this about silver birch because i absolutely adore him but it's a shame that he's so close because the backdrop here of the silver birch canopy and i could have made more of it than i currently can is the green and the orange and the blue sky and it just it just makes for a nice composition if this fella wasn't here and it's really challenged me. I've been messing about for a while and I just thought I'd try and explain what I've done to try and capture him. First of all, I accepted this silver birch and from over my left shoulder, there, um, I took a portrait shot further back, got the whole of him in, 
at that time the light wasn't quite so bright up in the canopy and I think I probably managed to, to draw out the shadows down the bottom and still get the top in a, a sensible exposure. And then I moved around a little bit, tried to exclude the silver birch um, and got a fair, fair composition but nothing special. And then I've come around a bit further and what I did is I composed a panorama and in a landscape orientation on the camera I shot four, four shots. I cleared the top of the canopy and I managed to get the base of the trunk in but I excluded this fella and managed to just get a four shot. The problem with it is it was tight because we've got the limb on the right hand side over here I needed to get the tip of that in and there's this branch here that juts out so the width of the frame is still quite wide even though the tree is quite narrow. As I say it's, <laughs> it's caused me a bit of a compositional headache but in any case I took a few shots, took two panos, I took one working my way up and then I took another one from the top down where I exposed clearly for the sky and let the bottom float. It did what, it's, what it wanted to do. Worst case scenario, I might be able to expose your blend. It's a bit of a, a dice roll because I haven't shot that way, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, and then just to wrap up, I love the crown so much, the top of the tree here. So what I've done is just finally had a composition on the top of the tree. It looks so lovely with the, the contrast of the orange colours, the blue sky, the white silver birch and then the, the gnarly oak. I'm a big fan of, of mixing these ancient oaks with another tree type so pine is brilliant for, for getting some of this stuff but silver birch is even better. So just concentrating on the top of this tree, this is the exposure I've got. I've put the actual oak in the right hand third sweeping up because naturally it curves to the left at the top and as it does so it brings the silver birch in the background into the center of frame and the peak of that is in the the top center i've exposed for the top of the frame which will show i'm just touching a a, a blow out there but it's very very minimal deep shadows at the base of the frame and then everything's moderate in the center that's off the histogram and I'm going to concentrate my final composition, probably a four by five, making sure I get the, the top of the top of the frame in there. Slightly different light on a slightly different day, but I'll come back for this guy. He's mesmerising. I need to find something else to look at. I'm going to carry on mooching a little way. I'll give myself. Oh, I'm spotting some god rays coming in. Look at this. Down there. That's by the major oak. <gasps> I can't not go and have a look. Okay, quick. I'm going to go. I'm going to have a quick walk down there, sprint, check out the light, see what it's doing. If it's anything like it looks, <laughs> I'll grab a shot. If not, spin around, run down here, check out one final composition, and then we'll call it quits for today. I don't think I've ever had a morning like this for light. As the sun's been coming up, it's been finding these roots down into the into the forest. But because the canopy's partial, it's as if it's got more opportunities to get through. And I walk along and then there's nothing. And then just 30 seconds later, I look behind me and there's this beautiful beam of light coming in, just like this. We've got the sun literally just risen to there and uh, the light rays, man, it's just incredible. 
and it's so changeable. It's, it's happening so fast, literally the sun's just crawling its way through the floor. So you just get this light moving along. If you just stick around for five or 10 minutes, you start to see it's the way it's tracking. And you get these beautiful highlights in the, the tree, this nice soft orange on the floor. It's really lovely. So I've took about 4,000 shots. <laughs> no, I haven't. I've took a few trying to get um, a sun star with these light rays in a densely packed forest. The chances that works are very, very slim, but I hope in the shots I've got, I'll, I'll at least be able to find something, something cool, something interesting. Composition that I had, uh, I've got a predominant tree over on the left hand side adding some shadow. I've got this shadow in the floor here with this gnarly little branch of this old oak and then the light rays coming in between. And because it's moving so fast, you can't see the sun rays there, but there were a few at one point. Very little sky, so an opportunity to compose something. There's those sun rays. Come on, come on, you know you want to. It's just there. <laughs> and you see what I mean by it moving so quick? One minute you've got this beautiful sunburst and the next minute it's just ebbed away behind a branch or a, a, a bit of the canopy or something. Anyway, folks, sadly my time's come to an end here today. I wish it hadn't. If things were different, I'd be here for hours, but they aren't, so. I've got to do the right thing and make my way out. Fair's fair and all that jazz. So I've had a fantastic hour in here, hour and a bit. I lost track of time slightly. So I'm going to make my way out now and I'll come back here as soon as I possibly can, try and get some more of this canopy while we've got remnants of it still hanging around. Bird song this morning has been beautiful. I've heard some very unusual tweets and chirps. I must bring in some food try and get a robin to come down and say hello. They're quite feisty little swines. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Anyway, thanks very much for watching, folks. Process my shots as usual, pop up a gallery, if anything worth a peanut, and hopefully you find a shot in there that uh, you quite like. So till next time, thank you very much for watching. Please take care of one another, and as ever, if you can't be good, just be careful, and I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.